Um, so the topic of today is uh, a use case on the new uh, endpoint that was introduced by Telgen by his uh, um, intern project. And basically in his project, uh, uh, this endpoint is able to provide with a list of packages when you give uh, an import name. And why this was important is because uh, there is one interesting feature, uh, which is to identify, for example, the packages that are uh, available from a file or from a notebook, and that would give us the list of packages that needs to be installed. At the moment, we were uh, already able to do it, uh, but uh, uh, we were not able to verify the where this package basically, if the name of the package that was identified is actually a package or or not. So now we have this uh, new feature and um, we introduced two uh, new command in uh, Tamos. So the first command is uh, what provides and this command basically give you, uh, for a given import name, you get the list of uh, uh, packages from that. So if we try, for example, we did some testing. So for example, IPython, which is actually what we get uh, at the moment when we try to discover what are the packages um, available from from, the, from from a file that uses uh, uh, this specific thing. And something is not working because, yes, of course, because I'm not in the VPN. And give me one second. Mm -hmm. And I will go in because I'm using the stage uh, environment at the moment, but uh, this should work as well with the um, production environment. So, in. yes, so as you see, uh, IPython is not actually the name of the package, but the name of the package that needs to be installed is uh, IPython with not these uh, capital letters. And this was actually done also for other packages which uh, report this issue. So sklearn is not a package, but it's a scikit-learn. And .env is not a package, but the actual package is uh, python.env. So this uh, command is able to uh, um, tell the user actually what is the package that they need to install. And this feature was actually uh, used also in another command that we introduced, we, that we call discover. So this uh, command, uh, you can basically pass uh, a project or a file, and in that way you would be able to uh, identify the packages. At the moment, was not able to identify these packages correctly, so now we can do that. I created this uh, test file. As you can see, there are some known uh, imports that we just tested. And so if we do, for example, Ramos discover, um, if you don't pass any argument, it will basically consider uh, everything in the project. In this case, I want just to have a look uh, at one specific file, which is called test.py. And we basically analyze that file. And as you see, identifies sklearn and .env. And uh, using the same endpoint, is able to give us the actual package. And if you go to the pip file, uh, because it reused the same logic that is already in uh, in Tamos with uh, with the, the requirements um, command. This automatically add everything to the pip file. This is the a pip file that already exists. But if the pip file is not there, if you imagine you have a, I don't know a notebook which has no dependencies, you can just do Tamos discover or a file that has no dependencies, and you can uh, this pip file will be automatically created. And uh, that's it. Do you have uh, any questions? Otherwise, no. uh... so looks like I could um, uh, I could just uh, go ahead on the internet using my favorite search engine, find the Jupyter notebook, uh, download it to my disk, and then in a very uh, Stack Overflow manner, do Tamos um, discover and know all the imports I need to put in my requirements TXT, right? Um, there's one thing I think, uh, but Frido can correct me. We cannot, uh, we, we analyze Python file with Tamos. Yes. So in ah, you, okay. the notebook so, is not a Python file. And that is what we introduce in, 
Horus, for example, which is mm. basically extending Tamos, but just for Jupyter Notebooks. And in that case, uh, we convert the notebook to Python file, and then we, we, we use the same feature, basically. The same uh, command that is here is uh, on top of uh, in, in Horus. So yes, we can, we yes, will correct. be able to do that after the release of this one. Cool, nice. I have a question, if it's quick, uh, um, if not, uh, but I, so how does it work? I mean, I, I mean, intend for to explain everything. I know it, I mean, you explained that it disconducts the API, but behind the scenes, what's going on? Like what's, what's um, the resolution? Yes, maybe I can share another thing with you yeah. to answer the question. Um, Give me one second. I'm just uh, was just looking for the actual uh, project that uh, Tielgen worked on. Uh, but if I'm not looking, if I don't find it, well, basically Tielgen uh, um, extended what. Uh, we already uh, were doing with Solver. So Solver was already collecting some knowledge and we introduced a new um, type of data, which was the, these imports in the results. And so he extended the database to store this uh, data and he exposed this data on the user API. So now we know um, we can basically use that endpoint for this kind of use cases. Um, and there, there could be also more, I don't know, for example, I think we discussed uh, Kebechet could also check if it, the pip file that you have is uh, using uh, all the packages. Maybe you have four packages, but one of them is not used. This could be also something that could combine this, uh, this thing that Tamos has with, um, with Kebechet, for example. Does it uh, answer? Yes, thank you, nice. You're welcome. Another use case can be uh, that we don't do this solely on uh, a package name version, uh, package name level, but also on versions. So uh, when someone pass uh, source code, like Jupyter Notebooks or uh, Python source code, we see from which modules, which symbols are uh, imported, and then that can give us hints which versions of packages were used. So we can narrow down the search to, to uh, specific versions. Then it's up to the user to check which, which versions are the right ones. Uh, but we can also uh, do something similar on, uh, so somebody finds uh, some snippet, some source code snippet on, for example, Stack Overflow and uh, tries to import some symbol from a library, but that doesn't work. So that what provides function can give users information which versions provide modules and symbols, and also which indices provide uh, such functionality. So from where the given package can be installed. And that was, I think, the, the output that uh, Francesco showed with uh, sklearn or .env, but uh, yes. the extension would be to uh, add like .env .module .something, and that will show, okay, this is the uh, Python module or Python package you can use. Can we use also maybe the date time? Like, if you know when that file or notebook has been created, filter versions? Yeah, uh, I, I think we can start with, with uh, like modules and then extend to, to symbols and that okay. will give uh, information. Uh, so modules we should already have in the database, so that's a just an off query. Thank you, Frido. Um, any other questions? Otherwise, uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, see you next time. Thanks for sharing. Yeah.